y'all. Welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. On Monday, we actually ate at my parents' house, and my dad made a pot roast with potatoes, carrots, and celery. He also had some cornbread muffins, fresh green beans with bacon, and some macaroni and cheese. This meal was amazing. On Tuesday, I tried a new recipe for a smothered pork chop and rice bake. So first, I'm just going to start by cooking my rice. I have one cup of a long grain white rice, and then I added in two cups of water, a little bit of butter, and a pinch of salt, and I'm just going to let that fully cook. Then I'm going to go ahead and get started on my pork chop. So I'm just going to be seasoning both sides with some of this Creole seasoning. The recipe didn't call for this, but that's just what I felt like using, and I tried really hard not to add too much. I kind of have a tendency to do that sometimes, but this stuff can overpower quickly. So so here I just have a little bit of vegetable oil heating up in my skillet. I'm just going to add in those pork chops and sear both sides for just a couple of minutes and these will finish cooking in the oven. Next, all I'm doing is spraying a 9 by 13 casserole dish with some nonstick cooking spray. And then I'm taking all of that cooked rice and just adding that to the bottom of my pan. And I'm spreading that out as evenly as I can. So then I just took my pork chops and layered those over the top. Over there to the side, you see my little mixing bowl. And all that's in there is one can of cream of chicken soup and one cup of milk. I just whisked that together until all the lumps were gone. The only thing that I would do different next time is season that up a little bit. I would probably add some onion and garlic powder. I think that would make it perfect. But I did add lots of black pepper to the top. And that's going to go in the oven at 375 degrees for 25 minutes. So here it is after the 25 minutes. I'm just pulling that out. And I have shredded up some mozzarella and sharp cheddar cheese. So that's what I'm adding to the top. Also decided to add a little bit all over the rice. And also I cooked up some bacon. I use about six pieces, I believe, and I'm just kind of tearing it up with my hands and placing that over the pork chops. And that's going to go back in the oven for a final five minutes just to melt those cheeses. So here it is straight out of the oven. I'm just topping it with a little bit of parsley for color. So here is my plate. I serve this with a side of steamed broccoli and all that's on my broccoli is a little bit of butter, garlic, salt, and pepper. This pork chop and rice recipe was so, so good. Definitely a keeper and it's just very few ingredients, which is how I like to cook. And you can have this on the table super fast if you prepped your rice and bacon ahead of time. Up next is our meatless meal of the week. So I decided to make some air fryer buffalo cauliflower wings. So here you just see me chopping up a head of cauliflower. And then I got started on the batter. So to my mixing bowl, I'm just dumping in some plain all-purpose flour. And then I added my seasonings. And all that is is some onion and garlic powder, smoked paprika, some salt, and some black pepper. And I'm just going to give that a quick little mix to make sure those seasonings get distributed into the flour well. Then I added in some milk and some water and just whisked that until all the lumps were gone. This was a little on the runny side so I decided to add in just a little bit more flour to thicken it and that seemed to do the trick. Next I'm just taking my cauliflower and tossing it in the bowl. I did this in batches and I'm just going to take a spoon and make sure that those are fully coated. Next, I just have a wire rack placed over top of a cookie sheet, and I'm going to add all of my cauliflower to that. This is going to allow all of that excess batter to drip off. If you skip this step, you're going to have one heck of a mess in your air fryer. So here, I just add it to my basket, and I'm going to air fry those at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. So while those were cooking, I went ahead and got started on the buffalo sauce. So I'm going to be measuring out one cup of this Frank's Red Hot Sauce, and I'm just going to add that to a small saucepan. I'm also going to be using about two tablespoons of butter. I'm just going to dump that into the hot sauce. And the recipe called for maple syrup. I could not for the life of me get that jar open and Josh was at home. So I just swapped that for some regular old pancake syrup. Um, I didn't measure that out and I should have because that is supposed to help cut down on the spice. But all I'm doing is melting down that butter and just letting that simmer for a bit. So now I'm just adding my cooked cauliflower to a large mixing bowl and I'm taking my buffalo sauce and just drizzling that all over the top. Now, if you guys decide to make this recipe, recipe. Definitely cut that buffalo sauce recipe in half. It was way too much. The cauliflower was practically swimming in it. Um, I should have saved half of it and just stored it in the fridge, but I didn't even think of it at the time. But here they are. They really do kind of look like chicken wings, which is impressive, and they were so delicious. The batter on them is what really made them, but I will say they were way too spicy. I like spice, but I was practically choking on these, um, so I would just tweak that next time, but I did have some ranch to dip those in, which kind of helped, um, and then I just served it with a side of this Parmesan couscous, which we love, and that was our dinner for Wednesday. 
On Thursday, I made some barbecue chicken legs in the Instant Pot. So in the Ziploc bag, I've just whipped up a quick little dry rub. And all that is is some brown sugar, paprika, salt and pepper, onion and garlic powder, and some chili powder. And I just shook that until it was combined. I also placed my trivet in the bottom of my Instant Pot. And then I just started to take my chicken legs two at a time and place those in the bag and shake those until they were fully coated in that seasoning. And then I just placed those on my trivet with the meaty side down. And I just repeated that until all of my chicken legs were gone. And once again, I don't know what is up with these recipes or the measurements seem to be so off, but I had so much of that seasoning left over and y'all know I don't like to waste. So luckily I had some chicken breast in my fridge and I wasn't too sure what I was going to do with it just yet. So I just coated those in that dry rub and placed it in the freezer. So I'll have those for another day. But now back to the recipe, I'm just going to be adding some water to the bottom of the Instant Pot. I'm going to place the lid on, make sure that it's set to sealing, and then I'm going to set my timer for 18 minutes and I'm going to let that natural release for five and then I'll do my quick release. So now on to the sides. I'm going to be air frying up some zucchini and I'm also going to be finishing off this bag of these cheddar pierogies that was in my freezer and I'm just cooking those according to the package directions. So now back to the chicken. I'm just removing it from the Instant Pot onto a foil lined cookie sheet. And I'm going to be drizzling some of this Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce over the top, spreading it out evenly. And that goes under the broiler for about five minutes. This is going to really make that sauce stick to the chicken. The only thing that I would do different next time is I would probably just pull off the skin before I cooked it because it didn't crisp up under the broiler like I thought it would, but that's just personal preference. But that dry rub was on point. Um, and then that zucchini, it tasted good. I really like the Creole seasoning on it. It, but it was way too mushy so somebody in the comments please let me know how long you cook your zucchini in the air fryer on Friday, I made some creamy beef and shell. So over to the left of your screen, you see me adding in my shell pasta to some boiling water. I also browned up one pound of ground beef and then drained off all the excess fat and added that back to my skillet. Now it is time to flavor this beef up. So I'm just going to be adding in some minced garlic and I'm going to saute that around for about a minute or two. Then for the seasonings, I'm adding in some simple salt and black pepper. I'm also going to be adding in some onion powder and then lastly, some Italian seasoning. And I'm just going to stir that to make sure that every little piece has plenty of flavor. Then I'm going to be adding in two tablespoons of just some plain all-purpose flour. And I am going to cook that for a few minutes to make sure I get that flour taste out. This is what's going to thicken up your sauce in a bit. So next, I'm just adding in two cups of beef broth and then a 15-ounce can of tomato sauce. And I'm just going to bring this up to a boil and then I'm going to let that simmer for a bit until it thickens. So now I'm just going to toss in that cooked and drained pasta. I only cooked up eight ounces, which is half of the box. And it always amazes me how much that actually stretches. But now on to the last couple of steps. I'm just going to be adding in some heavy whipping cream. And then I'm going to season that with a little bit of salt and black pepper. And I'm just going to let that heat through for a couple of minutes. And then I'm going to take some shredded cheese and add it on in. So I'm just using that combo of mozzarella and sharp cheddar cheese since I already had that shredded up from that pork chop recipe earlier in the week. And I'm just going to stir that in until the cheese is melted. It took no time at all. And as you guys can see, this is super creamy. As it cooled down, it got a lot less soupy. This reminds me a lot of like a hamburger helper, but I'm telling y'all, it's a hundred times better than that box stuff. It's definitely a keeper. We all loved it. I know that I'm going to make it over and over again. You guys have to make this one. And then I just serve that with some garlic breadsticks, just the great value ones that come frozen. And also a side salad. I just have some lettuce, tomato, and croutons on mine. And I did drizzle that with some ranch. Saturdays are normally the one day of the week that I don't cook. So we picked up some Subway and I got the Italian BMT like always. You guys let me know what is your favorite sub because I really need to try something different.
So now on to Sunday. I was looking on Pinterest ways to use up some leftover buttermilk and I came across this buttermilk chicken bake. So I have three bone skinless pieces of chicken breast. In that bowl I have my buttermilk and then in the other one I just have some seasoned flour. I like to use this box kind that's already seasoned for you. It's just a simple little shortcut. But I'm just going to take them one by one and first dip them into the buttermilk and then I'm just going to dredge them into that flour. So next, I have just melted some butter in the bottom of my casserole dish. I just let that um, pan preheat with the oven, so that's how I melted my butter. I added in my chicken, and I popped that in at 425 degrees for 15 minutes. Then I pulled it out and flipped over my chicken so that the other side can get a little crispy, and I let that go for another 15 minutes. Now I'm going to get started on the gravy, I guess you could call it. So to my mixing bowl, I'm just mixing together a can of cream of chicken soup and one cup of buttermilk. Also just seasoned it a little bit with some onion and garlic powder powder and lots of black pepper and I'm just going to stir that in really well. So I'm just going to take that and pour that all over the top of my chicken and I'm going to spread it out evenly and it's going to go back in for an additional 15 minutes and then it is done. So here is my plate. I just topped everything with some extra black pepper and parsley. I served it with some homemade mashed potatoes and poured plenty of that gravy over the top and I also have some green beans. I'm telling you guys this is one of the best chicken recipes that I have ever made. Buttermilk is a really great tenderizer for chicken, and it just made the texture of this amazing, and the flavor, just everything about it, we loved it. But that is going to wrap up this week. I hope that you guys enjoy the video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you all have an awesome week, and I'll see you in my next one.